Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I'm Dan Sams. And uh, I'm trying to get to Texas. I know, man. I'm trying. We had a buyer. He fell through. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. Now I need someone else to come by my house. Come by my house. Yeah. You need to find some commie that wants to stay there. Um, Well, dude, here's, here's a true story, man. So we did an open house on Saturday. And uh, it's from one to four. And uh, my wife and I were going to go to dinner. So we left our kids with the mother-in-law and we're driving back home and I'm almost home. I'm like, I don't know, two blocks away. And my, uh, my realtor texts me and says, Hey, you know what? The last family they're sitting out in the uh, driveway, they're talking with their agent. I don't, I don't want to, you know, look like I'm trying to shoot him. I don't want to disrupt anything. I don't want to like go take away all the signs, all that stuff. And I'm like, well, shoot, dude, I'm almost there. Should I just, you know, hold back? Cause it was, you know, like 410, 415, something like that. He was like, yeah, well, why don't you just hold back? So, um, and my wife was in her car right behind me. So I like flag her down. I'm like, Hey, you know what? There's someone at the house. Let's just hang back. And, um, so someone starts to come behind us. And so she starts to drive and like, I see her, she's like driving all the way down. I'm like, did you not understand? Like, don't go to our house. Well, she's like, dude, there was nowhere to park. There was cars everywhere, which doesn't normally happen. So I don't know something was happening. And uh, she's like, so I'm doing a drive by, I'm checking them out. (laughs) So I'm like, Uh dude, what a great idea. So I go, I could do a drive by. And I'm like, dude, it's a family and they're all wearing masks. I'm like, it's perfect. (laughs) That's who needs to buy here in California. The people who are still wearing masks, even today, they need to be buying my house. It's perfect. Yep. That's hilarious, man. That's I I was dying. How far are you from Burbank? Um, I'm a good distance from Burbank for sure. Like like an hour long drive? Probably. I mean, I don't remember the last time I went to Burbank, but it's that's right. Depends on the time of day, too, right? Because that's like I know, yeah, yeah. No, I've 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 been in LA traffic. I don't want to do it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the reason why I ask because uh, I have a feeling my my brother and his wife might be buying before too long, and so Dude, tell them to buy in Orange County. We are the the northernmost Orange County. It's it's uh, one mile from LA County. Like literally, that's how close we are. So you're pra- but you get all the benefits of Orange County. You get concealed carry, you get Orange County, you get uh, uh, stores that like don't care what the governor said, you get restaurants that don't care about what the governor said. I'm telling you, come to Orange County. So I I could tell them, here's the thing, though, like they have they have a community of faithful Christians that they are really united with there. And they see it as like, this is our mission field and these heathens. And so they're with us on all the things we're on, but they're really big on like we're an outpost here. And so I think, uh, I think they would, it would be hard to get them out of there, but also hey, like they hey, both work for an outpost here. Yeah. They need to take over our outpost. I'll, I'll make I'll, them a great deal on a, on a wonderful house. Yep. Um, I'll, I'll seriously mention that you're selling. Um, Cause like, you're not crazy far for no, them. No, um, they, we're, we're next door neighbors. Well, it's nothing. And I know. Yeah. And the, uh, the thing, I love how you're like, it's like an hour away. And you're like, no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's five, 10 minutes. I mean, max, max. <laughs> well, they both work remotely anyway, most of the time. And so, um, I don't know. And then they would get this wonderful office that I built. Uh, out. Yeah. Well, how far are you from Netflix's office? I don't even know where Netflix's office is. I don't even know where are. I'm, I'm yeah, never in California. I thought they were like Northern never. California. I don't know. I don't know. I know my sister-in-law goes into the office on occasion. So she works for Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. She'll tell you, she's like, they're, they're evil, but it's a good job. Uh, <laughs> well, my brother just signed on with crypto.com. I'm really proud of him. Um, he's going to be working for the libertarians, man. It'll be good. That's funny. 
Yeah. It's a good stuff, man. Um, oh man, we'll keep praying that you sell that, uh, that house and find your way to the promised land. I know. I yeah. know. That's, Maybe that's it'll be cool. like when God was getting the children of Israel out of Egypt and, and it took like Pharaoh saying yes, multiple times. And then when he finally let them go, they got to plunder the Egyptians and all of the neighbors gave them you know, jewelry and, and gold. And so maybe that's how it'll happen. You know, they'll, they'll give you all of their guns and money while you exit. Well, it, it's funny. You should say that. I, I know you say it in jest, but kind of the way that I look at it, there's literally nothing else I can do. Like it's all in God's hands at this point. Mm-hmm. So whatever God has in store, you know, maybe he's waiting on sending us the buyer because the right place he wants us to move into isn't ready yet, isn't on the market yet, whatever it is, right? The right city, the right, who knows, right? Because yep. that's the whole thing about God, right? He, he's not just looking at this linearly. He's looking at the whole the whole picture, time, yeah. everything. He's seeing it from an eternal perspective. Yeah. Right. So the way I look at it, it's like, all right, well, you know, uh, eventually someone will buy the house and I just leave it up to God because there's nothing else yeah. I can do at all. There's you're literally sounding, nothing else I can do. You're sounding like one of those wretched Calvinists, Pete. I don't even know what that means, but I'll take your, your word. You for don't it. know? It's Calvinist. It's the whole it. Calvinism, Arminianism. I hear those terms my whole life. I still don't know what they mean. And it's like, you can explain it to me. And I guarantee you five minutes from now, I'd be like, I don't remember what he said. Here's what I'll tell you. If you believe that God is sovereign over time, you're at least leaning Calvinist. Okay. Um but the Calvinists would be like, well, we don't really like to put his name on it most of the time, except when we're farting, fighting, farting, <laughs> fighting with Arminians. And then it's fun. The uh, Anyway, yeah, it's that's not a subject for this podcast, but yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord for your trust in the Lord, man. I'm serious. That's We're trusting him. He's going to get you where you need to go. He's going to get me to the promised land. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Well, I the buddy case, trying to get me to move to Florida. It's it's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, you know, I it's mean, not a bad idea, but the reality is I really like he was shocked when I was like, I, I actually don't really want to move to Florida personally. Yeah. I'm I don't love humidity. I, yeah, I, really, I don't love Florida as a locale. And and then there's the kind of what's the right word for it? There's benefits, there's good sides and downsides, but the fact that there's so many boomer retirees down there. Mm. has its benefits and its negatives. There's that kind of Floridian mindset that I have mixed feelings about. Um, so, but in general, I'm thankful for what, you know, they voted in DeSantis and he's doing some good things, man. I'm yeah. thankful for him. I am really thankful for him. Um, yeah. The cool thing about Texas is you're like a three hour flight from pretty much all the country. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can go anywhere pretty quickly. Or, or if you need to flee to Mexico, you can do that too. Well, I mean, parts of it are Mexico, you know. It's true. We used to be, yeah. hey, look, I'm saying we we used to be Mexico. I said, Mexico <laughs> sure, yeah. It's it's fun when uh my wife and I did a cruise a while back and it hit some of uh Mexico. And of course they have like, you know, these Mexican tour guides that take you around Mexico, or whatever. And they were describing that they're like, we actually, he's not joking about this. He's like, we actually have a problem with illegal immigration from the US. And he was talking about like reality. We have a whole lot of illegal U.S. citizens that are here longer than their visas and whatever. He's like, so we're thinking about building a wall. <laughs> like he did not but, say that. He totally did, and he was joking about the wall. But then he made a comment about like um, how uh, you know how you know the whole like we got Texas, and he's like immigration man. <laughs> it was hilarious to like. <laughs> kind of flip the script on that um anyway that's a whole other thing i just remember in the movie day after tomorrow where like uh the climate totally changes and like there's massive freezing in north america and mexico is like trying to stop everyone from crossing over the river the rio Grande, and going into mexico and they're calling (laughs) them all illegal aliens because all the u.s (laughs) citizens are rushing down into mexico it's kind of funny (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome man oh good stuff um well we've got some fun things going on pete and you know i was thinking about i was having a conversation with uh with leroy senior the other day and we were talking about how quickly we get to all the negative things going on right you just start watching what's happening and you're just raw and you're mad at you know 
there's just so many things legitimately to be mad about. And I thought today it would be fun to talk about purely fun things. And so we might end up mad anyway, but um, I had two great reviews of products that I wanted to share, Pete. Um, first, I'm not sure if I mentioned on here, but Kanai Pro Gear was offering their Vulcarian uh, plate carrier for $75 off a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Um, so it was like a hundred bucks. And this is the thing. It's not just a plate carrier. It's, uh, it's an extra pouch. It's uh, everything. Cool thing about this plate carrier. So I, I ordered one um, and I, I didn't try to hide it from my wife, but like I bought a lot of backpacks from Kanai, like a lot of backpacks. And so she's like, how much was that backpack? And I'm like, some of them like, it was like 25 bucks. And then there are some backpacks that, you know, it was 125, but it comes with a knife. And um, so she's like, we don't need these backpacks. What's wrong with you? You have a problem. So when I got another package about that size, look, maybe she's like, so what did you get? And why are you hiding it from me? I'm like, baby, I'm not hiding this from you. If I was going to hide it from you, I, I would have, I wouldn't like have it laying on my desk, but I do have it. And so then I didn't bring up how much it costs. And she's like, so how much did it cost? And I'm like, I'm scared to tell you. And she's like, how much? I'm like, it's a hundred bucks. It's not a big deal. Um, so she's like, so it's cool. We're cool. She's like, don't you already have a plate carrier? I'm like, but yes, but one of your, com uh, one of your complaints was that you didn't also have one. So now I have two and you're going to have one. Yay. Um, I didn't think she got that excited about it, but it was an answer that she accepted. So anyway, I got this Vicarian plate carrier and, um, I've been testing it out. Uh, one of the great things I'm noticing about it is that the, um, the pouch, everything is Velcroed on, right? So if you want to do a quick release, like a lot of those like military grade ones uh, do, there's not a lot of great quick release things where it just kind of falls off of you. Um, but I'm like, it's Velcro. Like it's it holds, it's easy to take off. Um, the pouch Velcros in, but everything is super secure. And here's the thing that's cool. In some ways, it's a minimalist thing because there's not a lot of bulkiness or whatever. It's straps are minimal, all that kind of stuff holds the plates in really nice and tight and it's elastic around the cummerbund. And so I don't know if you, you've got, I don't know what yours is, but a lot of these are just like, they make it out of the real heavy, super durable nylon material. That's not stretchy. Mm. And so when you're breathing heavy, you're like, like, I'm, I feel like I can't, this is, <laughs> I can't breathe. And then you tighten it up and it's tight in some places and loosen another, not so with the Kanai plate carrier. Um, that elasticity allows you to tighten it up good. It fits snugly, but it moves with you. It is hands down the best plate carrier I've ever worn. Um, mm. It comes with everything to get it for a hundred bucks. I thought was great. And so I'm recommending it. And I know there's other really great systems that they have integrated, you know, soft plates and you add hard plates and it's all, you know, a full plate system. Uh, really recommending the Vicarian, just every cool thing about it. Loving it. I think I've probably mentioned it on here, but I haven't been able to test it until recently. And guys, it does a great job. So that's product review number one. It's happy. It's worth 175 bucks, but half the time they're running it for a hundred bucks. You're going to want to get it. Nice. So, um, yeah. So I don't know. You have any thoughts, Pete, you might want to just like come back and be like, no, man, my safe life is way better. No, I actually, I think there are a lot of things that could be improved on mine and I would like to get another plate carrier and I'd like to get a single plate carrier system. Like you mentioned, so I got it. Mine's two, right? It's got an inner mm -hmm. and then the outer and the mm -hmm. outers you, you need it for the level four and the inner, I want to say is level three plus or something like that. Mm-hmm. That and it's just right. like, it's, it's a lot, right? Like it's really bulky. It'll do the job. No doubt about it. It'll yeah. do the job. But because of that, I'd like to get another one. That's just, I could put a single plate in it. Not as bulky. Mm -hmm. um, I also am not crazy about how it straps around your, your sides. It's yeah. done with Velcro, but it's like, you got to have that thing set up perfectly. So when you stick it on, it's really quick to, to slap it on. And, mm -hmm. uh, and secure it to you. So it's not, it'll do the job, but I think it could be yeah. better. Yeah, that's, that was how I felt about, and I'll just admit my other one was just, was Condor. And I know everybody mocks Condor. They're like, well, that's, you know, airsoft level. And I'm like, yeah, I totally understand. The thing is got a great deal on it. And 
um, it holds up like it's pretty rugged, but like the plates in the condor, it moves a little bit. Um, it's just bulky for me. Um, and I liked it. It's good. I got no complaints about it at all. Um, but to compare it to the Vakarian, I'm just like, dude, this is, this is incredible. And I think I like, it's a little bit more of a minimalist setup anyway. So it's, it's, it's really an apples and oranges comparison as opposed to an apples to apples. So no judgment on the, uh, on the condor. It, it did its job for the price. It's amazing. Um, but I'm noticing when it comes to Kanai pro gear, they're in this kind of creative space with their products where the quality is high. You have real operators will use some of this stuff. Um, people really like it. It's not on the level of cry precision, right? Like I'm just going to acknowledge like cry is going to be better, but it's going to cost you dearly to be able to get something like this. It's going to have everything you need hundred bucks, 175 most of the time, but watch for a sale. You just can't beat it. So Good stuff. And I have something else I need to review too, Pete, but I don't know if you had any more plate carrier comments. No, go for it. Jump review it. All right. So you all all know that I've become like crazy on Mantis. Um, I am I am running the Mantis nearly daily. There are days where, you know, I'm overrun with things and tasks and that I don't get to shoot. Um, but I'm shooting nearly daily. I'll do 50 to 100 clicks a day, um, sometimes more than that. And I am seeing an immense improvement in my shooting. Mm. Um, so I'll do, you know, I'm probably doing 500 clicks, um, you know, dry fire clicks to every one, uh, you know, range click. But I tell you what, I go out and I fire live fire and I see the difference, man. I am spinning targets like I never have before. Um, my confidence when I pull the trigger is much, much larger. Anyway, though, all that said, um, I've got, uh, my buddy Bravo. Uh, we've mentioned Bravo a couple of times. Bravo is one of those dudes. He's a Marine, um, retired Marine, whatever you call it. I don't know the right word. Cause they always say once Marine, always a Marine, but Bravo has, um, has in one of those does bushcrafting and survival skills, uh, does all kinds of stuff related to designing knives. Um, he works on guns. He's not an official gunsmith, but he does just about anything other than milling guns. Um, just, he just knows his stuff. And so recently, um, Ohio passed constitutional carry. It officially goes into effect, I think, June 13th. Uh, so as of what June 13th. Day for it to start. I thought that was interesting, too. Um, it, I mean, it's, it's early June, mid June. I can't, I, I think it's the 13th, um, but it passed. And so now the mentality is from so many, and this is, this is a problem. People are like, oh, well, I don't need to go and get the CCW training. Cause I don't have to have it because I can just constitutional carry. Um, and I think that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, obviously our second amendment loving hearts love that constitutional carry was passed. Um, but we really did value that people were getting some training in a CCW class. And so um, we're concerned that there's going to be people carrying that have not had training to do real defensive shooting. And not that CCW does that much, but it does some. And so uh, Bravo was like, you know what, we need to offer a training specific to this. So now that you don't have to do a lot of the stuff in the CCW class, although we're going to carry over a lot of those things. Now there's going to be this opportunity to say, all right, let's really customize this to not just what are the basics of concealed carry and all that kind of stuff, but let's really get into how do you defend yourself in this kind of scenario or that kind of scenario. And so uh, he's launching that training. Well, one of the first things that came to mind is you get a new shooter that's not really experienced. What's the best way to get him started? And that is with something like a Mantis system. And so he's integrating Mantis systems into his training. Um, and so that led to a, well, maybe I should be a Mantis dealer. So contacts Mantis, I don't know, two weeks later, um, he's got a package of like every Mantis product and then some uh, coming to his house. So um, he and I get together. I'm doing his website. Uh, he comes over the other night. Uh, I finish up the website. We had to get a couple of key things done for it. And he pulls out the Mantis Blackbeard system. And he sets it down and he's like, hey, man, he's like, I want you to try this out. I know you're not going to have time to do it while I'm here, but like, check it out. Let me know what you think. So if you guys are not familiar, the Blackbeard system for Mantis is a bolt carrier group and charging handle replacement. 
Uh, so you take out your charging handle and your bolt carrier in your AR. You put the upper part of the Mantis in there, and then it has a battery pack that is a mag that like slides right up in there. And what it does is not only provides a laser out the front when you pull the trigger, but it does an automatic reset. And so if you've ever put a Mantis system on or like just the regular Mantis on your AR, usually you're, you know, you're having to charge the handle every time, which is kind of a pain um, so that you can, you know, test the thing out. This does an automatic trigger reset and you're seeing, oh, laser is going where I'm pointing. Um, plus it makes a really satisfying little choo sound. And um, I'm going to tell you, that's a big part of it for me. I'm like, if, if it sounds like a Star Wars blaster, then that makes it even better. Um, I spent a couple of hours messing around with this thing and I'm totally sold, sold on it. So uh, I was big on Mantis already. Um, Blackbeard system, guys, is incredible. Uh, so had a good time. It also works with their laser academy thing, which allows you to actually shoot the laser at a target and it tells you where your hits are. Um, so really, really cool. Had a good time with it. I am recommending it. There's a couple of things, adjustments that like I need to make on like where I'm putting it because it was registering the trigger and the reset. And so some of that's like where you put your mantis on it, but um, incredible. I'm recommending it. And I, I don't know, it's 200 20 bucks, uh, maybe 250, depending on which, which laser you get guys. I recommend it. Nice. It's good times. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I got to try that out. Yeah. What kind of I drills think you do they do. have for the uh, AR? Um, you know what? I can tell you. Um, so, uh, and I will tell I have not done as many drills on the AR. Um, let's have a look. Shot timer uh benchmark drills where they do test compressed surprise break uh kneeling position shooting shooting uh alternating hands uh secondary is primary and vice versa cadence drills and then they have the basic marine corps qualification uh so you can go through that they have a rifleman course that covers all the basics i did that a while back i haven't done the marine corps qualification yet um not bad um i would say not as much in the rifle drills as there are in the pistol drills but there's enough there to make it worth your while um the other thing i would say when it comes to the rifle drills you're you know you can do where you're you're lining up and trying to just do precision shooting but for a lot of us our ar drills are you know we're we're trying to do ready ups and that kind of stuff and so you need to be comfortable with the fact that uh, when you're doing those kind of drills, you're not going to have the same level of proficiency. Like we're not expecting that you're going to get a 95 every time you're doing a ready up. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're in the 85 range and you're doing that consistently, well, that's not bad. Um, hitting, uh, if you're talking about a man sized target or you're clearing a room, um, you can shoot with this level, you know, of like an inch grouping, or you can shoot a four inch grouping. And when they're two feet away from you, 10 feet away from you, that's not bad. We can do, we can work with either one of those. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That range with an AR, it ain't going to matter how far the yep. grouping is. Yep. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's the thing I'm having to, cause I'm, I'm vain when it comes to this. So, um, you know, on Mantis, like I'm, I'm in groups, people follow me, I follow them. Um, and I'm in the, I'm in the group for Walther shooters and it tracks who's shooting the most in there. And then it's also tracking like your percentages. And so the top shooters in, you know, your gun, and you can do it for other groups than this, but I'm kind of paying attention to the Walther shooters and I'm kind of comparing myself. And well, for a while I was number two in the world, right? It's the one that only has like eight people in it. 25 you know oh, okay um now it's the walther p22 shooters only had two and i was number one there you go <laughs> so you know um but my thing is my percentages will go down when i'm doing like ready up drills and things like that with the rifle um and so i'm like ah oh, I, I don't want i don't want them to see my bad percentages and thinks that think that's my pistol shooting and so you know so in other words mantis needs to fix it so they can see, oh, this was rifle, this was pistol. Well, you can filter by rifle, right? Like, I mean, I, it will show whether it's rifle or, or handgun, um, but it's still my percentage is there. And I don't know, it's, you know, when I'm looking at somebody else's, I don't usually look to see if it's pistol or what. I'm just like, oh, 
so-and-so got only an 83 on that open training. I'm kicking his butt, right? <laughs> but um, I might not notice, you know, so maybe they're not looking. So I'll just maybe need to not be vain. I guess that's what I, I just need to quit being vain. Um, but man, the thing is awesome. Pete, you're going to love it. It's going to be like your favorite thing. It's it's amazing. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So that, that was what that's what I've got going on, man. Testing out stuff. Um, and of course, as soon as actually, I should say this. I um I get that blackbeard out. I'm of course LARPing around my house, um, practicing all this stuff. And I'm like, uh, well, I probably should do this with my plate carrier on because it makes it more realistic. So I put on my plate carrier and I'm like, and <clears throat> forgot to tell you my wife's out of town for a retreat over the weekend and so like i'm like full scale like clearing rooms in my house and i'm like you know i'm larperating which i want to i want to coin that term like larperating man and so my uh my wife texts me in the middle of this she's like so what you doing and i'm like i'm i'm clearing houses with (laughs) with the mantis blackbeard system and i took a picture of me and my plate carrier and i'm like resist the urge to come home and make love to me right now (laughs) <laughs> and so she's like i don't even know what any of this means like you're a dork <laughs> that's <clears throat> awesome i'm a dork who's training that's awesome. so anyway yeah it was good times yeah yeah well that's cool man i uh i was thinking <clears throat> about biden and his uh his ghost gun ban stuff that's coming up here do you realize how many businesses he's putting out of business in basically 120 days, well, now 100 days, whatever it is, man. Well, you 80% arms. I think I like they're the big one I know of. Who else? There's, I know there's a lot of them that are doing it though. There's a lot of them. The one that I've bought from a lot is uh, like I think it's called like 5D Tactical or something like that. That's where I mm-hmm. bought a lot of my stuff. Um, 80% arms. I mean, they basically came out with the GS9 not that long ago. So you know, that whole, all the money that they invested in that gone, because let's face it, like, this is what people don't understand. They're like, Oh, it's so easy. And it's so cheap to make a, your own gun. It costs you more to make your own gun to go buy a Glock. Yep. And the reason yep. why we pay that happily is because the government doesn't know we have it. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the whole reason. I don't, I don't need it. I've got Glocks. I don't want the government to know what I have. Yep. <clears throat> And I'm happily gonna pay the extra, you know, two two fifty, whatever it takes, to get the whole system up and running. Uh, but obviously, I mean, it's just gonna absolutely kill all these companies that now they got to serialize it. Because what's the point? Like yeah, seriously, it, what's the point? It takes away the entire point. Then, yeah, it just does. So you're gonna um, go down to the zero percenters, which is buy the CNC machine and make it from a block. Yeah, and you're going to see a boost in the, um, uh, you know, the 3d printed lowers, Yeah, which none of us love, but I love, I love it for freedom, but I'd much rather have a milled, you know, milled lower. That's why you're going to have to do the CNC, the, uh, what's it called? The ghost gunner, I think. <laughs> CNC yeah. machine. Um, it's like 2,500 bucks. Honestly, I've got so many blanks. I'm like, I don't really need it. But mm-hmm. part of me is like, yeah, but I kind of want the freedom to be able to just make it at the drop of a hat. You know, I also think about like what happens, what what does the market do? There's always like we think about this economically. There's always a unintended consequence of government interference. Yeah, right. True. So what what they've done is made it harder to legally acquire unserialized guns, unserialized lowers. And so, but somebody like that can spend 2,500 bucks. Well, now he's got a little bit of a motivation to uh, get that money back. And like the the potential for black market lowers increased, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I would do it. I'm just saying like, they've created an incentive now to be like, okay, well then I'll go to my buddy. It's already a big hassle to mill this out. So like, I might go to my buddy who's got, the zero percent or ghost gunner thing. And I'll be like, Hey man, you know, how about a hundred bucks to mill this out for me right now? I'm not going to do that, but I know that the temptation for some guys just went up for that. Cause it's like, well, I'm already going to get in trouble. Might as well do it. Well, technically it's not illegal if they use your machine. 
Mm, that you know what true. I'm saying? Like you, you can't hit the go button, but they can make their own gun. That's not illegal still. So, so can you, they could take I, the block, they stick it in the machine, they hit go, they take it out. They did it. So they, could I get one of those machines, charge you to come over to my house and, you know, have a drink of water? Technically, the ATF has gone after people for that very thing. But I don't know that they actually would have had a case if it went to court. I don't know yeah. if it went to court, but I have heard of the ATF going after people who basically just said, all right, you hit the button. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because they were running out of a commercial center. It was here in Southern California. And, um, you know, people would hit the, the button and make it. Mm-hmm. So the ATF has gone after people for it. That's, I'll leave it at that. They have gone after people for it. Hmm. I'm not going to do this. Oh, I, dude, I'm not doing anything. I would, I would never do that. Right. I wouldn't want to even do something right on the edge. I'm just commenting that it is interesting that now the incentive for that has increased. Oh, 100%. And I think you're absolutely right. The unintended consequences, I think you will see people doing that, right? It'll be like, hey, uh, my buddy uh, Franco over here, he's got one of those machines. And all of a sudden on a Friday night, he's got 10 friends over and they're all, you know, pressing the go button and making their own. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I think that'll lead to even more regulation. But again, what it comes down to for me is this is all done with an executive order which means it can be undone with an executive order. Mm -hmm. So the problem is we got, I I can't say the word I want to say, we've got uh, uh, politicians without any backbone. Let's just leave it at that. Who are going to leave it in place. Yeah. Right. But like, if we had a politician in there who said, you know what? Trump's bump stock ban was unconstitutional. It's gone. Biden's ghost gun ban is unconstitutional. It's gone. Um, so all that who, is, just, who is our guy that could do that? I'm going to tell you the, you know, the first name that comes to mind. Who? I, it's Ron DeSantis. Well, of course, that's mine him. too. I don't know if I'm, he would do it though. He hasn't, I, he hasn't taken the gun thing and run with it, except he did say, before I leave office, we're going to have constitutional carry in Florida. Like that's one of his goals. Mm. So he says, again, he's a politician. <laughs> I don't know if I trust a single one of them. He's, he's and, said that. And, and then in the back of my, uh, my mind, I'm like, I'm constitutionally for this. The thought of Florida man being able to acquire a gun easier <laughs> and carry know, it right? without, without any training. I'm like, hmm, I don't know, Florida man. But they're already carrying. Like, I know. Yeah. So last Friday we had uh, we had a man, we had an emergency here at the house. I had to rush my wife to the emergency room. Oh man. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, And so the emergency room I took her to was in Long Beach and I had to leave the house so quick because like long story short, my house looked like a crime scene. There was blood everywhere. Right. Oh no. And uh, so anyway, we get there and I'm like, man, I had to leave the house so quick. I don't have a gun on me. I'm probably the only person in Long Beach without a gun on them. <laughs> yeah. like, and ironically, the it's not that people don't have guns. It's just that they don't have them yeah. legally. But, and ironically, you're probably one of only five that can legally carry them. I know, right? I know. Is your wife okay? Yeah, she's fine. Yeah. So um, I uh, I had a, uh, a bleeding related incident uh, about a year or two ago where um, I was doing some bushcrafting and I had, I actually had a machete fall on my hand and I was losing blood pretty fast. Ow. Geez. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I, I think I might've told the story on here. Like I'm holding pressure on it and I'm asking, I realized that my first aid kit is in my roll top backpack inside it. And I'm like, that's not going to do for quick access. And so I'm asking my daughter as I'm holding, you know, on my hand and I can feel myself a little bit lightheaded. I'm like, I'm right. okay. I'm okay, but like this can't, I can't keep bleeding like this. And so I asked my daughter, I'm like, get, get my first aid, get out. And she's like, I can't, I don't know how. And I'm like, you don't know how you had the same backpack as me. And she holds up her fingers. She just done her nails and she didn't want to mess them up. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, by the way, that one, I looked at that. I could see blood or tendon or, I mean, tendon or bone or whatever was underneath there. And I'm like, man, this is going to cost so much in stitches. I got liquid skin and butterfly bandages, patched that thing up myself and I'm doing just fine. Um, so yeah, 
good yeah. times. Yeah. So um, here's what I, I talked to a special forces guy after that incident, though. And he said, dude, we were taught to tourniquet everything. He's like, it could be the smallest scratch. And he's like, a tourniquet buys you time. And uh, something worth considering for all of us. We use knives. We're around guns. Um, and I don't know the situation with your wife. You don't have to say. But I, they, he made a big deal out of any appendage. Go ahead and tourniquet. It, it, even if it seems like a small cut. He's like, because it buys you time just in case. And allows you to treat it. And I'm like, I'm going to do that next yeah, time. The, the problem with my wife is it was a cut on her face. So I, I can't tourniquet her head. Because that, <laughs> that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, so she's okay now? She's okay now, yeah. Man, bless her heart. That's scary, dude. I, dude, I, 11 I, stitches, man. 11 stitches. It was man. It was, the the face bleeds. The face bleeds. Any any head head thing bleeds yeah. so fast. And dude, it was so bad. Like so much blood was was coming out. She had a, a sweatshirt on and just dripping off her elbow. I was like, dude, I've seen so much TV. I gotta cut off the sweatshirt, find out where the other hole is. Yeah, like I'm like, where but it was just the face bleed, you know, just the face Man. bleeds. So is it going to like, is it going to leave a scar? Yeah. Oh, bless her heart, man. Yeah. Oh man. It won't be bad though. In yeah. my opinion. She'll be cool. She'll, yeah. she'll just be one of those tough wives. It's good. Yeah. Well, I mean, the way that scarring works is it takes time, but then eventually it's like, you don't even barely notice it. Yeah. That's Yeah. Cool, uh, man. I'm sorry. I hope she's glad she's okay. That's that's scary, man. Yeah. Just, yeah. But I'll yeah, text you a couple pictures. You can't tourniquet a head wound. That's no. uh, <laughs> I mean, you can, but it, it kind of defeats the purpose. It does, it's not buying you time. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it ain't buying you time at all. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like there's probably a joke in there like that. The uh, the army would tell against the Marines of like, you know, <laughs> gotta gotta tell them not to tourniquet head wounds. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, that's that's all I had today, man. Tell, tell your wife. We said, hey, we're praying for her and praying well, for the house. Yeah. Say, yeah. Man. I'll just uh, throw out there again, man. Once I can get to the land of the free, I am so making SBRs and suppressors. All of it legally. I'll do it with the ATF. Mm-hmm. I'll file all the paperwork. Do I believe it's a form one, which is when you make your own. I, I'm like so looking forward to it. I keep saving all these instructions online, who to buy everything from. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I want a, I want an SBR AR9 and an SBR AR15. Uh, like I want them both. I want them both with suppressors on them. Uh, mm-hmm. e- ironically, in California, it's legal to buy threaded barrels. It's legal to own threaded barrels. It's not legal to have a threaded barrel on your pistol hmm. unless it is uh, welded at the end with a cap on it. And so I haven't bought a threaded barrel, but I'm like, dude, I, I, I want a threaded barrel because I want to have yep. a suppressor. And I want to be able to, you know, have a suppressor on my, my nine. But like, that's, I, that's what you need for home defense. Who's going to go throw on their, their ears in a situation where it's like, you know, someone's in my house. Yeah. You're not going to have time. You're not going to have yeah. time. You're not going to have the, you, you're literally just like, give me my weapon. Let me start clearing this thing. Yeah. And, oh, uh, that's why you need a suppressor. Um, oh, uh, Clint Smith has actually talked about, he's like, you, you need to be real careful about, you know, people talk about shotguns for home defense and it's, it's great. He's like, there's nothing like a shotgun. He's like a shotgun basically takes the guts out of a person and just dumps it on the ground, like a bucket of guts. And um, <laughs> he's great, but he's like, he's like, I want, he's like, think about in a closed space, the, the blast from a shotgun and what that does, not just to your ears, but to your own orientation. And he's like, it, good and bad from it. Like essentially like, noise is a, is an issue for you um and so i think he if i'm recalling he was advocating for suppressed ars from defense um don't hold me to that that might not have been what he was saying but well he um, manufactures yeah. a uh, sbr with a suppressor welded onto it and he sells it it's like three grand he's like it's only one tax stamp because the suppressor is yep. welded onto the sbr and that's what he sells and oh, uh, i think he was probably the first one that gave me that idea i was like i really like that as an idea mm-hmm. Um, I mean, 
here in California, we can't get AR pistols. So the other way to do it is an AR pistol in a free state. At least it's you know shorter, so it's easier to clear corners, you know, go around corners, things like that. Um, and then you'd still have to get a suppressor, but yeah, the the AR pistol would be the the non tax stamp way to get your SBR. Yep. Well, and yeah, if I have an AR pistol, and it's funny, it's like, well, I mean, this this brace at the end not too different for me than a stock and um to be able to get away which with one that. do you have which brace uh it's the sb tactical okay i will that's, nice one, right? that's the the main one that yeah. i got yeah, yeah uh, i like it i mean i mean i think i would still prefer a well in general i would prefer a regular stock however me too. me too however i would say when you're carrying a plate carrier and there's some bulkiness around there uh, there's something to be said for essentially just less real estate there. And um, it's, it's not the worst thing. Um, I still don't like that. It's an impingement on our freedom, but I, there are even maybe advantages to it. Um, not that I would shoulder fire it anyway. Um, of course but there are advantages in an emergency situation where suddenly they would say that that was legal and you could do it. <laughs> so um not that I would. Um, yeah. So anyway. yeah, no, I, I uh, yeah, I, I will just say I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to get an AR pistol. And I mean, that's part of the, the thing about moving to Texas is uh, apparently it takes months and months to get an appointment to get your new driver's license. And I need a Texas driver's license to be able to buy any firearms there in Texas. And so like that, you know, as soon as we finally sell this place, we buy a place out there, I'll have an address that I can use. And then at least I can get into the queue. I can set an appointment yeah. for getting a driver's license. Yeah. But that's that's the only thing that's going to slow everything down is I got to get the driver's license. Because of, you know, federal law, you can't sell guns to people who are out of state. They got to transfer back to California and I got to pick it up from a dealer who's got to do the background check and hold it for 10 days and all that crap. Yeah 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 but a day is coming where you will be free pete you're gonna be able to but that's the goal baby that's the goal it's gonna bring it good. on bring it on excited for you dude you're gonna enjoy it well, good stuff man this is fun um so hey i'm gonna if it's all right as we sign off here i'm gonna i'm gonna give two quick plugs obviously lake erie arms uh we just broke ground on the new facility it's happening moving along so check out learms.net all kinds of cool uh, events happening now that the weather is warm enough. Um, but check out learms.net. Have a look at all the events we have going on. Exciting stuff. I also, since we we mentioned him today, uh, I want to talk about Bravo Defense. Um, if you go to bravodef.com, you can look at the classes uh, that Bravo, Bravo has. Bravo Def, uh, short for defense. Oh, Bravo, I said Bravo Def. I was like, Death. No, but that sounds cool now. I'm like bravodeath.com. Add that domain, man. Um, the uh, but no, bravo def def uh, dot com. Um, check them out. Uh, regular bravo defense.com was taken. You can also go to bravo defense.net and it'll get you there. Uh, but here in a matter of even today, maybe, uh, you'll be able to buy Mantis products on there. And um, worth worth checking out. Um, so all that said, check out bravodef.com. Uh, you know, give our boys some love and uh, we'll see you soon. Cool. All right, guys, we'll be back next week. We'll talk to you all then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.